The safety position is one of the biggest question marks for the Eagles heading into the 2023 season. Unable to come to an agreement with Chauncey Gardner-Johnson and seeing Marcus Epps head to Las Vegas in free agency, the draft became an obvious choice when looking for a replacement. Labeled as a Red Star player during the scouting process, the Eagles added Sidney Brown to their safety room with the third pick of the third round. A tough, highly athletic player, many believe he will become a fan favorite. There's a lot to like about Sidney, so let's take a look at why he was a Red Star player for the Eagles and how he can fit into Sean Desai's defense this year. When describing what a Red Star player is, here's what Howie Roseman had to say. That that's a guy who kind of exemplifies what it means to be an eagle. So it's a, a great character, uh, captain, um, testing numbers, intelligence, um, plays the way it should be played, practices the way it should be played. And how he mentioned that he plays the way it should be played, and that's exactly what fans will learn to love about Sydney. Looking at a two-play series against Nebraska, we can see this as well as his football character and IQ. On the first play, Nebraska is running a change up to the typical zone read by having a quarterback fake the read and keep the ball while the running back becomes a lead blocker for him. Illinois is using a gap exchange technique where they are having the defensive end slant into the seed gap while Sydney is responsible for the D gap and quarterback if he pulls the ball. Sydney gets inside a little too much and while he likely would have been okay getting back out to the quarterback if it was a standard read option, he gets outflanked by the running back unexpectedly blocking. The play ends up going for eight yards. Nebraska comes out the very next play and runs the same thing on third and two, just flipping the play to the other side. It's pretty common for teams to do this. The Eagles did it a number of times last season as it doesn't give the defense and coaches time to make adjustments. Illinois had the same play call on defense as well. Everything is the same, except this time Sidney decided he was going to put an end to the drive. Instead of waiting to go to the sideline to discuss with his coaches and teammates how to adjust, Sidney recognizes the same formation and takes a pre-snap alignment that gives himself a better angle and leverage to take on the block. When the ball is snapped, Brown does his best impression of a battering ram and destroys the running back, giving the quarterback nowhere to run. When you look at this block, both players had great pad level, but Sydney just exploded through contact. You can tell the running back was hurting after that hit. I don't think this is a called blitz because looking at the wide view, if Sydney blitzed, only the safety would have been able to cover the two, well really three receiving threats if you count the eligible offensive linemen. Literally every player did the same thing on the previous play except Sydney. But altogether, the sequence shows Sydney's football character and IQ to bounce back from a bad play, recognize the formation and situation, and make the right adjustment on the fly. The physicality he brings at the point of contact is what Howie's referring to when he mentions playing the way it should be played. When you watch Sydney play, you see an athletically gifted guy that terrorizes offenses by flying from sideline to sideline with great effort and tenacity. He is able to fill gaps quickly and with force while also being able to chase down wide receivers and fast backs in the open field. His closing speed and fearlessness is a great combination to see in the secondary as it helps limit big plays. His effort is unyielding and that's perhaps his best trait, both on and off the field. Howie mentioned that testing numbers are a factor in deciding Red Star players, and again, Sydney meets this criteria. Not only do you see that when he's chasing down players, but next gen stats backs him up, giving him a score of 89 based on his combine performance which is one point from being in the elite tier. He was also a state finalist in multiple different sprints in Florida. In addition to that, Brown's build is a bit unique for the safety position. He has a thick, rocked up frame, weighing in at 211 pounds while being only 5'10". His height ranks in the sixth percentile of safeties, while his weight is in the 69th percentile. Due to his unique blend of size, athleticism, and toughness, as well as the playing style of the Illini, Sidney was primarily used in a Jamal Adams-ish role. He would be lined up in the box consistently, essentially playing well linebacker for a good amount of his snaps. This makes it easy for us to evaluate his ability to play in the box. On the edge, he has the strength and physicality to stack and shed tight ends and bigger wide receivers. On this play, he does a good job rooting his feet 
playing with good leverage and body position, blocking the arms, and shedding the block at the right moment. He then shows off his short area quickness. This running back is already in a forward sprint before getting to Sydney, but Sydney has the explosive ability in his body to shed and get up to speed quickly enough to make the tackle. Sydney's height provides him natural leverage when taking on blockers. Though it's not enough to be able to take on 300 pound linemen, it's enough to allow him to consistently beat tight ends and wide receivers. And speaking of wide receivers, good luck to any wide receiver that tries to insert block on Brown. It's just not a matchup that most wide receivers outside the DK Metcalfs of the world are gonna win consistently. On the interior, he does a good job recognizing and closing gaps quickly. He doesn't shy away from lead blockers or running backs coming at him in the hole. He does a good job being crafty when offensive linemen try to block him, using space and quickness to evade and duck around blockers. When chasing down ball carriers from the backside, he has the speed and acceleration to get to places other players can't. On this play, he decides to chase the play down from the backside. While that's a choice that might not have been ideal, you can see his speed show up in pursuit. He also does a good job mid-play, knowing he needed to adjust his angle slightly in order to catch the running back. Now, to turn this into a great play, since he's a second tackler and the back is being held up, we'd like to see him try to punch this ball out. While he shows the ability to beat blockers on the edge and the interior, he needs to be more consistent with his hand usage. There are times where he lowers his shoulder into contact instead of playing with his hands. Now, due to the way that he was used in college, we have a good understanding of his ability to play the run from the box. And while that is a factor in playing safety, he is gonna be used much more from deeper alignments in the NFL. Illinois pretty much played cover one with Sydney aligning on the primary tight end on first and second down and third and short situations, and then moved Brown to deep safety on third and long situations. Due to this, there's not much tape of him playing the run from depth. And playing the run from traditional safety alignments versus linebacker alignments is different. The run pass keys are often different, the angles to the ball are different, more tackles are occurring in space versus in close situations. It takes a little bit of projection when envisioning Sydney's ability to play the run from depth in the NFL because he hasn't done it much. You can certainly see him excelling in it due to his speed and acceleration, along with his desire to get to the ball, and I'm confident he will learn. There's just some mystery around his current level of proficiency in playing the run from depth. As mentioned, Illinois played cover one on about 60% of plays, and on almost every rep of cover one, Sydney was lined up on their primary tight end wherever they went. This led to him getting extensive work in the slot and some reps outside as well. In cover one, he primarily utilized catch technique. Catch technique required that Sydney play off coverage around five yards and mirror the release and route from the tight end as they approached. Because of that, he did not have many reps where we got to see him in a back pedal or having to break or flip his hips and run in man coverage. What we would see is his lateral agility and physicality to battle tight ends on display. When he stays square and with a solid base, he shows a good ability to shuffle left and right to stay in front of tight ends. He has the strength to hold his ground at the top of routes. Again, his lack of height gives him a natural leverage when needing to hold his ground against tight ends. The most common error you see with catch technique is not staying square and instead opening the gate as the opposing player approaches. Sydney is not immune to that. He needs to be more consistent staying square. But when he's not able to stay in a good phase early in the route, he makes up for it with his closing speed. This play against Minnesota is a good example. On the release, as the tight end stems inside, Sydney shuffles inside to maintain leverage, though he probably was a little too far inside. But as the tight end approaches, Sydney doesn't stay patient in his technique and opens his hips, getting ready to turn and run. As we look at the tight view, we can see how much space that gives the tight end to run unimpeded. Sydney is no longer connected and rounds his break at the top, but his ability to accelerate and close allows him to win late. The throw is late and inside, so it gives Sydney a chance to break it up. But that ability to accelerate and close gives him a chance to recover and make plays in ways that lesser athletes can't. We see his recovery ability again on this play against Michigan State. He does a better job with his leverage initially, though we'd like to see him stay square into contact and shuffle laterally with his feet instead of opening his hips and lunging into contact. But regardless, he disrupts the timing and release by causing the tight end to move off his spot a significant amount. 
As he gets into trail position, Brown realizes that due to the initial split of the tight end and the outside release he takes, there is a very small chance that he runs an inside breaking route. And if he did, there's safety help inside and over top. Because of all this, Brown anticipates an outside breaking route and is working to undercut it. Sinny uses his speed and route awareness to get in phase to be able to look back for the ball to make the play. Sidney's acceleration and closing speed allows him to play more aggressively on tight ends, knowing he has the ability to recover if he's out of position early. He has also shown the ability to cover wide receivers down the field, both end game and at the senior bowl, only adding to his versatility. Here, Brown is lined up outside with the tight end, isolated on the backside. It's one of the few chances we get to see Sidney play man coverage from a backpedal. He gets turned around here, but what we like to see is Sidney's movement pattern to recover. He is able to lower his center of gravity, open his hips, and turn 180 degrees in one step while still being able to get up to top speed instantly. He went from being turned in the complete wrong direction when the tight end was within a yard of him to being in position to make a play on the ball if it was thrown. Now, I wouldn't say he has the most fluid hips. I would watch tape of Christian Gonzalez to compare, but his quick feet and acceleration allow him to change direction and close space instantly. He's a bit unique to most 210 pound safeties, as most safeties that heavy are taller, and those high cut guys tend to be a little clunkier and heavy footed in their transitions. However, he's gonna have problems matching up with tight ends in the red zone and in box out situations, as his lack of height and length is going to play a factor. But there have been plenty of safeties in history that have been able to make a big enough impact in other areas of their game to overlook their lack of height and length. When looking at Sydney and zone coverage, we need to separate the discussion into underneath coverages and deep coverages. Due to playing in the box so much, he has experience and understanding of playing zone responsibilities underneath, such as in the flat, in hook zones, and as a seam runner in cover two. Playing in underneath zones really allows his blend of size, athleticism, and effort and pursuit to shine. He will drop to proper depth and coverage before using his high-end acceleration to close the space on checkdowns and his physicality shows up when needing to take on blockers and bring down ball carriers. He understands the importance of getting depth and width when covering the flat, and his quickness will allow him to bait quarterbacks into thinking there's an open window before he closes them. His experience and his effectiveness playing underneath zones brings a versatility to his game that will allow him to be used in creative ways. Now, when looking at Sydney in deep zone coverages, like when having to play the run from depth, there is some projecting that must go on. The Illini's change up to their base cover one call was to run a trap cover two, where Sydney would line up like he was in man coverage and then bail into cover two at the snap of the ball. While change ups like this often resulted in big plays for the likes of Devin Weatherspoon, bailing into the deep half doesn't give us a great picture of Sydney's understanding and ability to play the deep half from a traditional depth and drop back. The only times we really saw Sydney line up deep pre snap was in third and long situations. So the amount of film of Sydney playing the deep half, middle post, or even man coverage from depth is limited. But we can still see how his athletic traits translate to playing in deeper alignments. His ability to turn and burn gives him great range to cover on throws deep, and his ability to accelerate should allow him to close on throws underneath quickly. His effort shows up in the pass game like it does in the run game. He gets interceptions from tip balls just by hustling through the end of the play, and I expect that to continue. That's just one reason why he was able to rack up 10 interceptions in his career. I don't think anyone is doubting his athletic ability to play the safety position from depth. There's just likely to be some learning curves in moving from essentially playing a linebacker and slot corner role to playing from depth. The eye discipline is different. Reading the quarterback and determining the angles to break on is different. The mental game between the quarterback and safeties is different. There's little intricacies of knowing when you can break from the structure and freelance and that takes time to learn and understand. Let's look at this play against Wisconsin. Obviously, we can see his athleticism on display to close and get a big hit on the wide receiver, but let's go back to the beginning. Illinois is blitzing the corner and playing with a three deep shell behind it, requiring Sydney to play the deep third over top the blitzing corner. Sydney's eyes are first to the receiver, then to the quarterback, then to the receiver, and then back to the quarterback. Sydney plants to break on the ball after the ball has already left the quarterback's hands. A safety with experience and good processing from deep can make a play on this ball quicker. Knowing that they are blitzing, 
the safety should expect the quarterback and wide receiver to make one of three adjustments once recognizing the blitz. If recognized pre-snap, the quarterback could signal to the wide receiver to execute a quick smoke screen. If it's a matchup they like between the wide receiver and safety, they could have the wide receiver run a go route and take their shot one-on-one. -on -one. But the most likely thing to happen if the blitz isn't recognized until post-snap is to have the wide receiver convert to a curl beneath the safety like we see here. Knowing this, the safety shouldn't have to get their eyes to the wide receiver and back to the quarterback, and certainly doesn't need to do it twice. What he should be able to read is the quarterback's drop, his shoulder to know the direction the quarterback's looking, and body language upon the release of the hand from the ball to know which angle to break at. If it was a smoke screen, the quarterback would catch and turn to throw immediately. Notice on this play, the quarterback takes a three-step drop from the gun, which takes a quick screen out of the equation. As Sinny gets depth, he should be reading the direction of the quarterback's lead shoulder and the angle of the elbow and body language when he takes his hands off the ball. At this moment, the shoulder is pointed to the left, and when his hands come off the ball, the elbow and body language are in positions indicating that the throw is going to be traveling at an intermediate depth. If he is going to throw deep, then that elbow would be angled towards the sky and his upper body would be tilted back. Sidney should then be able to trigger in his mind that he needs to take a 45 degree break once he sees those hands separate from the ball. Once he does decide to break, Sidney plants and takes two more steps underneath himself and towards the sideline before getting downhill. With Sidney's athletic ability, polished technique and understanding of the play, he could have turned a knockout into a pick six. And to be honest, in the NFL, you expect those receivers to hold onto the ball. There's a lot of potential with Sydney's game, though. Sydney is almost making a position change in the NFL. These little intricacies and nuances are what may hold him back from starting day one in the NFL. He may be at a level playing from depth where the coaches think he is good enough to earn the starting spot right away, but the staff won't really find that out until the pads come on in training camp. The other area that is likely to hold him back right away is in the tackling department. It's not that Sonny doesn't want to tackle. He doesn't shy away from contact. It's that he often lowers his head and launches himself into the legs of ball carriers. While that can create some big hits, he doesn't wrap up often, leading to broken tackles at a high rate or outright misses as he doesn't have vision on the ball carrier's movement. There's certainly a time and place for going full speed and aiming for the ball carrier's thighs, but that's not every time, and we definitely don't want to see him ducking his head like that. The Eagles aren't in a position where they have to start Brown right away, so if he's showing that he's a liability when it comes to tackling in the NFL, then he's not going to play much. If Sidney didn't have the desire or willingness to tackle, then I would be concerned. That's a dagger that can't be overcome by anyone but the player themselves. But better tackling for him can be coached up, and I expect Sidney to become a better tackler. Like I said, the Eagles aren't in a position where Sidney has to start right away. Though an undrafted free agent, Reed Blankenship stepped up and played well right away. You have to take PFF grades with a grain of salt, but they thought Reed played well last year too, giving him the 16th highest grade of all safeties. Yes, he was undrafted, but he proved he belongs in the league, and I think he should have the first shot at starting next year. From game one, he showed that he understood the nuances of playing safety, baiting future Hall of Famer Aaron Rodgers into an interception. He's a good tackler in space and in the box, shows good play recognition, and plays with a lot of effort. I know he's not the athlete that Sidney is, but he's not slow either. When you look at some of the best safeties in the game, you realize they're not the fastest guys on the field. Dawkins was a 4-6 guy, so are two of the four all-pro safeties from last season. Ed Reed, widely considered the best free safety of all time, ran a 4-5-7-40. Sean Taylor was 4-5-1. Reed Blankenship was 4-5-5. What all of these players lack in top end speed, they make up for with their IQ, physicality, and effort. Who I think Sydney would take playing time from is more likely to be free agent addition Terrell Edmonds, though I don't think it will be as easy of a job to take as most believe. Edmond plays a similar style to Sydney, and he's an extremely gifted athlete himself. He is bigger and has more length than Sydney as well, though I think Sydney has better change of direction skills. Though Edmonds didn't garner a big contract in free agency, he started for five seasons for a bunch of really good Pittsburgh Steelers defenses. There's value in that. The veteran knowledge and understanding at a position like safety, one that has as much of an emphasis on the mental aspect of the game as the physical, 
is what is likely to be the difference in having Edmonds on the field over Sydney early. I think Sydney will get a good amount of playing time early, just in different packages. Sean Desai likes to use a lot of dime packages where they get six defensive backs on the field. The Seahawks ranked seventh in dime percentage last year, and the 2021 Bears defense that Desai coached would have ranked seventh last year as well. Getting Sydney on the field as a dime linebacker will give him playing time right away and at a position he is already comfortable at. Plus, with the state of the linebacker room, Desai might lean into more dime looks. Putting Sydney in positions where he can utilize his unique skill set to fly around and attack underneath while giving him time to learn the nuances of deep safety play seems like the best way to develop him while also keeping the interests of the team in mind. I expect to see some creative uses from Sydney, similar to what we saw from Desai and Jamal Adams last year and their incredibly brief stint. Could Sydney take the starting job as the year goes on if he doesn't win it outright in camp? I could definitely see a scenario where the Eagles find it harder and harder to keep him off the field the more he plays. But if the Eagles are winning and things are going well, I think it's unlikely we see a change in starters. We could very well end up in a Nakobe Dean, Kaiser White situation like last year. But this is what I do believe. Sydney has the tools, both physically and mentally, that you want in a safety. Howie has clearly been on a trend of picking really great athletes from the best schools in the country and Sidney Brown is no different, being the captain and turnover leader of the best defense and the second best conference in the country. The kid is a real deal. It's only a matter of time until he's running out of the tunnel as a starter for the birds.